Hey, 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 happy day. Let's talk about the expression labor of love. Labor of love. Hearts around me just because it kind of fits with the theme of labor of love. What does the expression labor of love have to do with growing and building and supersizing our businesses? I contend a lot. This expression, of course, is from the New Testament where it makes a reference to a phrase, or there's a phrase in the New Testament that says, um, perform work just for the pleasure of it, not for the profit. Now, of course, if we have our own businesses, we're doing it for the profit of it. Unconditionally, if we have a business, we're growing a business, we wanna supersize our business because we wanna make a profit, we wanna create a living. We usually wanna create other things out of the money and the profits that we make from our business. Now, if what you do for a living, you love it, if it's your passion, if it's something you really care about, if you're working with people that you really want to help, that you really care about, then your work becomes a labor of love. In addition to just being your work, your business, your, um, your occupation. So is what you do something that you are excited about and passionate about and you love doing and people that you're working with that you love serving? Because if you love serving them, if there's a labor of love component to your business, number one, you'll always attract the people that you're meant to attract and that will always feel good. And anytime it's the good feeling part of what we do and what we're creating in the world, that is the labor of love part that we would do. If, if what you do is what you would do in your business, even if you didn't get paid for it, then it's a labor of love and you're probably on the right track and you will find it so much easier to grow and supersize your business. This expression, again, from the New Testament, but it became popular in English in the 17th century. It's from the 17th century. Any expression that has been with us for hundreds of years has a huge impact on people. We all know people that, that are doing their business just for the sake of making money, and, and they can be very successful at that, yet there's a cost and a toll to them on that. Then we also know people that are passionate about what they do for a living and, and how they help and serve people and how much easier life seems for them because success just seems to come naturally because they're doing something that they love. They're helping people they care about. I guess my question for you today is, are you in a business that you're passionate about? Now, I will admit that I've been involved in a lot of businesses. I think I've done like 27 different businesses and industries I've been involved in. And it, you know, plus or minus three or four or five, right? because I, I just counted them up one day and I could have missed some because maybe it was a day that I wasn't thinking about everything. I didn't write them all down. Normally I write everything down. And I, I will do that, I will go back and I will make a total complete list of everything I've ever done, every company I've ever worked for, every business I've ever been a part of and owned and, and figure out what the exact number is. But I think 27 is pretty, you know, close enough to be a lot, right? It's a lot. A lot of people haven't been involved in 27 different businesses and industries. Some people have only been involved in one or two or three. And it doesn't matter. It's not, a, it's not about the number. It's about in those, in those variety of businesses, there have been some I just did for the money. I just did for the profit of it. And I'm not doing those businesses anymore because they weren't a labor of love. I wasn't passionate about them. I didn't feel awesome about them. Even the food business, I hate to admit it, I love the food business. I love cooking. I love creating. But when it was turned into a business, it took out some of the fun and creativity and the love I felt for cooking, right? Because it became big and commoditized and consistent and the same all the time and it had to be to give people what they expected. And I loved some of the customers that I served but I didn't love others in, in different businesses that I've been involved in. And those, those were the days that you don't wanna go to work, you don't wanna do what you're doing because it isn't both what you're doing for the money and what you're doing for the passion or the love or the desire of either what you're actually doing or the people that you're serving and the lives that you're changing. So it's just a quick gut check to see if you're on the right track or not. And guess what? No matter what business you're in or what you're doing to make a living and make money, there's always a way to tweak that to make it have a labor of love component to it. How do you do that? Make sure that you're serving people that you care about and want to work with and want to serve. And there's always a segment of them in your population, no matter what industry or what market you're in. Sometimes we tell ourselves, oh, there's no money in helping people that are poor. There's no money in helping people that are sick. There's no money in, you know, bringing water to the whole world. Well, yeah, there is if you 
do it in a way that both honors getting that goal accomplished and doing it because it's the right thing to do. I think doing things just because they're the right thing to do is also a labor of love because there's always a shortcut. There's always a way to do things without having the component and the compassion and the love involved. And to me, those aren't the right way, but it might be to you. I mean, maybe it's just, hey, what's the most efficient way to get this done? We're going to get it done. And then there's a way to do it that pretty much honors everybody in the process and makes everybody win, 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 win. And that usually feels good. That usually feels better. So I say reach for the option, reach for the choice that feels better as you're creating your business. And that makes it more of a labor of love than a labor of just something that you do to make money. So do you have things that you do that are a labor of love? And in our businesses, we can always add a component. We can always add a volunteer component, or we can always use some of the profits that we gain to participate in and contribute to and add value to the, the, the organizations and the causes that we care about that are a labor of love for us. So even if our business doesn't specifically fit into that, we can find ways to impact the world in a positive way by, by participating in things just for the labor of love. We can volunteer, we can, you know, I, I think contributing money, to be honest, is the, you know, most people just opt for contributing money because you can get it as a tax deduction, but I think that there's so much power in being involved with other human beings, so much power in being out in the community, so much power in interacting with people, human beings, and helping other people, and actually, donating our time and our energy. Our time and our energy are the most precious resources we have. And I find that I think it's much more admirable when people contribute their time and energy and their attention to something than just writing a check. That's just my personal opinion. You might say, hey, it's easier to write a check. Well, of course it is. I've, I've done both. I've written a check and I've, I've volunteered and, and, and done things and it always feels better you know, to me personally to spend the time and the energy with the elderly, with the, the big brother, big sister kids, with um, people who are sick, with whatever the situation is, the things that make me feel good. Because we all need that boost of things that make us feel good. So do you know anyone that is performing in your business, or you perhaps, that is demonstrating labors of love? I, th I think moms and and uh, significant others and spouses demonstrate labors of love every day. And I think that they are so under-recognized and under-appreciated. So I say, hug a mom today, not to get in trouble, or hug a, or just let someone know that you appreciate how they support you and how they do so much for you and you might not appreciate it. Behind most entrepreneurs, most successful business people, there is a significant person, a significant other that helps to make what they do possible. If I didn't have support, if I didn't have people that love me, I couldn't do what I do and never could have done what I did in the past. Uh, and we need to remember to acknowledge and appreciate those people because that is also a labor of love. Just acknowledging and recognizing and giving our time and attention to people that support and love and care about us. Go out, have an amazing day. Let somebody know that you appreciate them. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom, what it means, and what it, where it came from, if it's known, and what and how you might apply it to your business. Have an amazing day. Go act in a loving way, and I will be with you tomorrow.